In this video learning series, Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Sweet. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, 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 good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Good Good morning, Miss Reed. Good morning. How are you? <laughs> I am fine, thank you, and happy to see you. Same here. Jesus. Yes, miss. I'm waiting on them. Too. Morning, Miss Walker. Good morning, Mrs. Reed. Good morning. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I am good. Good morning. I am good. I'm okay. I'm either to have. Our letter was already equivalent of 14,000 feet. What is wrong with my browser now? Anything you do? Is it your system? I'm Santi. Good morning. Good 
watching the news please can you turn it on thank you good morning colleagues good morning mrs reed morning good morning good morning good morning good morning good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Thanks. morning. Thanks for joining. You're welcome. I am your presenter, Pauline Reed. And as we explore the stated topic, I invite you to record your questions in your chat and I will attempt to respond at the end. Our topic, avoiding burnout, yet free self-care in times of crisis. I have always been very fascinated with nursery rhymes and ring games. And I've embraced many life lessons from them. London Bridge is Falling Down is a popular nursery rhyme. It became popular in the mid 18th century. But it was a childhood game for many of us. Its origin had many theories. But I want us to allow the literal image to straddle a figurative significance. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down. My fair lady. It all sounds like good clean fun until, until you start thinking about the meaning behind the lyrics. What is the story behind London Bridge falling down? The old London Bridge served an important role in London as it was the city's only crossing over the Thames up until the mid 18th century. As educators, we can be likened to this London Bridge because we are the linchpin to national development, the bridge for human growth and, and advancement. Throughout history, the London Bridge went through its sheer of wear and tear with the constant flow of traffic on the Thames, with the upsurge of waves, even stormy gales, and the onslaught of a major fire. Needless to say, the bridge weakened and the structure began to fall apart. Do we see a parallel here? We too, as educators, we have faced many challenges. Sometimes we complain about the lack of parental support. We bemoan the fact that we do not have unlimited resources. We also complain about the negative tendencies of those we seek to lead. And yes, we have to face, especially at this time, our own personal difficulties in life. So we are like the weakened bridge. And I want to use the weakened bridge as an allegorical rendering of a situation so aptly described in the topic as a burnout. Our desire is for happiness. This slide is telling us that to achieve happiness, there has to be some important considerations. Burnout does not refer to physical exhaustion, but here, there is a focus on career listlessness, dormancy in creativity, absence of motivation and zeal, sheer disappointment, even disillusionment with aspects of our lives. What happens as a result of this? We experience a crushed spirit, an erosion of joy, and deep-seated contentment. 
do you know that the World Health Organization has classified burnout as an illness? So the time crisis for this session is not going to be about the realities of the pandemic and the realities of our having to be away from the physical work setting. But I want to regard it as a time when there is no way that we can resist spending some time in serious reflection, grappling with the self and our pursuit of a fulfilling life. So I want to suggest that there is indeed a solution to this dilemma. The dilemma of avoiding burnout. Because if you have been there or on your way here, where you may ask me, to the place of burnout, where you are not totally happy with yourself, unmistakably coming, it is a dilemma, a crisis. I want us this morning, though, to switch crisis to a catalyst. Let us see this period as a catalyst. A crisis highlights negative impact, but a catalyst is exchange. Therefore, use it as a chance for us to see to restore the self. So I want us to focus on life-altering solution, which is really a change in lifestyle. So this brings us naturally to the matter of self-care. And for this day, we have said the compulsion to preface the term with guilt-free. Because in all honesty, we operate in this country in a culture where self-care, though essential, when practiced, attracts some degree of guilt. Because somehow we feel judged, sometimes condemned, criticized, and labeled as whimsical, materialistic, and sometimes even arrogant. What I wish to say to us, taking care of the self, taking care of your body, your health, and by your health, it is your emotional, psychological, and mental well-being. It naturally makes you feel better, but it also enables you to perform better professionally and to be able to move positively into performing your duties. And you are able to positively influence and impact others. But there is this is not selfishness. I want you to get that. Self-care is not selfishness. It is simply good stewardship. Who is a good steward? The person who takes care of the Lord's gift and uses it wisely. The only gift you have is yourself. That is what we have to offer to others. So I am going to suggest something that sometimes we hate or fail to accept. Do you know that sometimes we avoid self-care because persons regard self-care as a synonym for self-involvement? But self-care is spiritual and should not be pursued with any tinge of guilt. So as we get into the presentation, I want you to quickly take this stress test. And I'm going to ask Mrs. Mm -hmm. Kaimi to mute the mics. There are several simple questions on screen. Do you find it hard to unwind? Do you overreact to situations? Do we sometimes exhibit nervous energy? Do you get agitated easily? Do you experience difficulty relaxing? Uh -uh. 
towards intolerance. Can you be described as touchy? That is giving energy to trivial issues. I want you to quickly answer those questions. Having done that, I want you to multiply the score by two. Hold it hard to mind it all. And you may post your score if you wish to do so. Normal descriptor, then you are doing great. Mild, you want to introspect and make personal adjustments. Moderate, take away from this session all the important elements that you need to, and you might find them helpful. Severe seems like some of us will have to resort to seeking professional counseling. And above 34, we have a dire emergency. There is definitely need for immediate remediation. We have to acknowledge that this session is necessary. This brief, this self has experienced some whittling away of its sense of worth and effectiveness. However, in renovating and restoring the bridge that is substandard, inferior, and compromising the quality, strength, depending on our hey, I'm in our own son. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mrs. Reed. We're not hearing the presentation. I don't know if something is wrong with the microphone. And many more. And do remember, buy one, get one Good morning, colleagues. Um, can we all mute our microphones, please? Hi, my name is Mrs. Reed. Got disconnected. We're trying to get her back online. Okay. Are you hearing me though? We yes, are you're hearing now. Yes, we are hearing no, you now. Okay. Hearing but not seeing. So welcome back, Mrs. Reed.
Are you hearing me now? Yes, Mrs. Reed, we're hearing you. Yes, so you can yes. continue. At what point? At what point I lost you? At the end of the stress test, um, that right. last slide where we had to multiply the scores. Right. All right. Yeah. Could we also connect so that the person sharing the PowerPoint is able to do so? Can we see back the question? One jeans and get one jeans free. Buy one shirt. Right. Can we see uh -huh. question? Um, I am. I was accidentally called a logged out. Can someone accept me back in the room, please? I am sharing the PowerPoint for Mrs. Reed. Okay, no challenge. Oh no, we don't have no microphone. You can't hear it. Can we dance? Can we dance? Uh -huh. All right, so we are back with the stress test. And I mean, after that technical glitch, after that technical glitch, I probably should take this test. <laughs> <laughs> the first question still having difficulties getting to share the, the, the PowerPoint. If everybody comes off the video, it would help. Yes, and if persons, yes, close their video and also mute the microphones many persons and so there's clearly an overload you so we're likely to have difficulties okay so we're asking morgan as we're having a screen sharing Good morning. 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 Good morning.
All right, here you go. So we are at this stress test. Seven simple questions. One, do you find it hard to unwind? Two, do you overreact to situations? Three, do you exhibit nervous energy? Four, do you get agitated easily? Experience difficulty relaxing. Six, do you have a tendency towards intolerance? And finally, can you be described to trivial issues? Multiply the score by two, and you may post your score if you wish to do so. All right. If the results have a normal descriptor, then you are doing great. Mild, you might want to introspect and make personal adjustments. Moderate, you will need to take away from this session some important points. You will find them helpful. Severe, seems like some of us will have to resort to seeking professional counseling. And above 34, oh my, this is a dire emergency. There is definitely need for immediate remediation. We have to acknowledge that a session such as this is necessary. So over time, this bridge, the self has experienced some whittling away of its sense of worth and effectiveness. However, in renovating and restoring the bridge, we cannot use material that is substandard, inferior, and compromises the quality, strength, and durability of the structure. Build it up with wood and clay, wood and clay, wood and clay. Build it up with wood and clay, my fair lady. No wood and clay will wash away, wash away, wash away. Wood and clay will wash away, my fair lady. This stanza clearly warns of the material that ought not to be used in restoring the bridge, in restoring the self and clay should be used. So here we go. We have to look at the crumbling bridge. And the first factor is self-guilt. So for the upcoming slides, you will notice that there are some juxtapositions. So here we have self-guilt causing slumped shoulders. This man has lost any zest for real living, reduced to lethargy and listlessness, and burdened by self-guilt, a factor that destroys the human bridge. As educators, we all like to pride ourselves in being selfless, committed, and sacrificial. But we need to exhibit these same attributes in God's greatest gift to me. Then it means that I must take care of me. Our role as leaders means that we must also lead in lifestyle practices. I am going to be very honest, very candid with you. When I'm in a setting with Dr. Engleton, I scrutinize the outfit before I even get engaged with the content of the presentation. And I dare say I'm always impressed. 
and therefore eager to listen to the content. And I know that I'm not being shallow. I feel satisfied that persons who are presenting regard me as important and so spend time in ensuring that the entire professional makeup is impressive. Look at our male leaders who are known for their sartorial elegance. And we all know that even students give particular attention to this. In fact, in the popular jargon of teenagers, they now describe this state as pop down. The physical image sends the message though, that I care about myself and I care about how I present myself to you. Both premises lead to the logical conclusion that I care about you, the persons I serve. So this morning, this discussion has to transcend the need for exercise and proper diet. Issues we tend to address every time we focus on self-care. But we all already know that if you allow yourself in this time to munch throughout the day, munch on refined sugar, ignoring water, vegetables, and fruits, and failing to exercise, then watching your waistline will be an easy feat, if not the past since your waistline will be where you cannot miss it and your health will certainly be compromised. Here, we now have slovenly dressed professionals showing some levels of uncertainty. They don't have it all together for their presentation. Placed next to them is a bridge, a bridge that is clearly unplanned, an ad hoc architectural monstrosity of a bridge, an engineer's nightmare. When you look at yourself, do you like what you see? Do you feel good about yourself? If not, throw it out. If we fall into a state of burnout, we will begin to neglect the physical. You have to be able to compliment yourself before you face others. Love yourself first, and then gaining love from others will be a bonus. Please, please wear a permanent smile. Make a conscious decision to have a friendly and winsome personality. Greet persons with sincere warmth and friendliness, and you will reap the benefits throughout the day. You will always be cheerful. Trample the notion here that you must not indulge the self. And so I encourage you to add to your life, add the activities and the things that bring you pleasure. Add the things that titillate your senses and please pamper the self. Find your happy place. Relax with Chardonnay, soft music, and a candle permeating your space with your favorite fragrance. Invest in a comfortable bed, feather pillows even, high thread count sheets, and do not purchase them to put aside to create impression. Do it for you. Do it simply because it makes you comfortable and happy. We have here a face distorted by negativity. A face reflecting on happiness and pain simply because this person has become a receptacle for people's unkind comments. Don't even look at the pieces of clay that will make this bridge aesthetically unappealing. A bridge of clay is not structurally sound. It is unsafe. Similarly, 
we too have to shed all that makes us physically unattractive and makes us unable to perform effectively. Never feel that you have to explain your priorities and choices to anyone. Unhappy persons will always question your rationale for taking a European cruise with your retractive salary. But you did it because you just needed to spend time with family in comfort and ease. Plus, you wanted to visit museums, art galleries, simply to feed your cultural palate. Yes, a pair of shoes. Oh, yes. Even when you have several at home. Yes, because you know you're going for fabulous. And it is a confidence booster when you stand in your executive role. Stop that thought. That physical beauty is vanity. When you need to feel special and feel good about the physical, all it does is that it simply indicates that you possess the inner beautiful traits of self-love and wanting to appear pleasing to others. Listen carefully to a matured person speaking. Never underestimate the value of romance for total happiness. When you go home, if you have nighties or old boxers men as sleepwear, throw them out. If you have not been doing so, acquire negligee and silky pajama bottoms for the men. Keep your date nights. And as we get older, Please have the resolve not to abandon important practices which enhance the self. Even if I experience joint pains, I will not use any topical cream with strange odor. There's absolutely no place in my room for tiger balm and bengue. Do not retire. Do not get into bed without a whiff of perfume, ladies. And men, a splash of cologne. These things contribute to overall self-care and not an occasional occurrence. And they give life balance. The balanced life has a strong foundation. So the flimsy pieces of stick you're seeing will not create balance. You have to discard any stick that robs you of a sense of balance and centeredness. Know the activities that give you balance. Know the activities that give you peace amidst life's turmoil. And make these activities habitual. Spiritual nurturing of the self through daily meditation is crucial. We can face crises devoid of fear and trepidation because we are under divine leading. Operate with an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of love and sincerity. Please, I caution, abhor negative energy. Protect your spiritual space so that you always move in an aura of happiness and contentment. At this time, at, in this, during this pandemic, positivity is essential. For our emotional well-being, we have to be positive. Be informed. Please be informed. But not digest an hourly diet of media coverage of scenes that appear inimical to inner peace. When you hear the numbers, yes, you look at persons who have been infected, but focus on the number of recoveries. I want to caution do not give credence to mudslinging from others. You have to know the difference between constructive criticism and self-destructive comments. 
throw away the negative clay. Do you know that is your reaction that gives people hope? Let negative fall off the self like water off a duck's back. When you embrace negative energy, it hampers your performance and it stifles your professional growth. So you have to crush any inclination towards mudslinging. Anything that is zapping your energy. Do you know that we contribute to our own stress level? Because sometimes we just overcomplicate and overthink stuff. When I told my daughter that I would be doing this presentation, she advised that I should just have a positive approach and don't be concerned about the likelihood of anyone criticizing my efforts. She said, Mommy, do a good job and make sure that you are happy with it. And if others feel otherwise, you must be able to dismissively say, too bad. But if you are disappointed in the outcome, then resolve to be better next time. And mommy, simply let it go. So we have to identify sources of our negative stress and create a plan to eliminate them. Never allow your self-worth to be based on people's approval. So you stress yourself, overworking to prove things to others when you should be delegating, providing others with the support for them to develop. There's a very important question I need to ask. Are you saying yes to people when you really wish to say no? For social events, my son tells me, my children are my counselors, my son tells me, mom, don't accept an invitation to be where you don't want to be, with people you wish to avoid, engaging in activities that bring you no joy. Mommy, simply say no. Your happiness is what must matter. So don't rob yourself of joy by harboring hurt and ill feeling. What I can tell you is that people will say what they want. Do whatever they want to you, but not for as long as they want. Because the Lord is your vindicator. Erase hurts by resolving conflicts and moving on in an atmosphere of inner peace. Seek to associate with persons who require great things off and from you. Persons who are always affirming your talents, giftings, and your blessings. Surround yourself with healthy people people who are loving and respectful. So I implore you to build a community of friends, colleagues, and experts who lift you up, schedule time for your personal growth, set aside time in your calendar so that you can have your time of introspection, healing, and spiritual evolution. This type of activity is cathartic and it leads to restoration and renewal. But here, we now go to the final stanza. And this stanza advises us of the material that we have to use going forward in this restoration process. Build it up with iron and steel. Iron and steel, iron and steel. Build it up with iron and steel, my fair lady. Iron and steel will not break. Bend and break, bend and break. Iron and steel will not break, my fair lady. So, the restorer of London Bridge decided to use steel 
and iron. The bridge carried five arches. So let's just add the five arches that we will need to build the cell. And at this point, I hasten to articulate my disclaimer. These factors that I'm going to be highlighting are not based on pronouncements from theorists, researchers, or even pontiffs of great philosophies. They are according to an educator of many years. My age is insignificant and pales in comparison to my experiential qualifications. So I'm not claiming to have avoided all of life's pitfalls because I've fallen into some. But I am seeking to swerve you away from them. So the first arch is acceptance. See this couple beaming with joy and happiness and contentment. True happiness cannot be tarnished. True happiness cannot be understood by the simple-minded. Accept who you are and be happy. Accept that your life is your own. No apologies, no excuses, no one to blame. You alone are responsible for the quality of your life. And today, age doesn't matter. We can all have the result that it truly begins for us now. And that you are going to make it an amazing journey. Come with a lack of ability, but rather a lack of commitment. Be comfortable in your home. We're spending a lot of time in elaborate mansion. And yes, too, yours can be elaborate and palatial. But not because you have to be like your neighbor, but because it makes you happy and it makes you comfortable. Allow your home to reflect your personality. Comfortable, modest, well decorated. Comfort is not wrong. Persons love to look at convenience and comfort and call it ostentatious living. You drive a luxury vehicle because of its comfort and safety features. And sometimes you just love the model. Ignore the naysayers who feel that you should have opted for something more economical and compact. I will tell you that people will treat you based on how you treat yourself. So you are special. Give you the special treatment you deserve and test this theory. The second arch is the establishment of boundaries. Boundaries are crucial or persons will think they have the freedom to trample your self-esteem into the ground. Grandparents used to warn us, don't pass your place. They were addressing adherence to boundaries. So set boundaries for your friends or frenemies. You get to choose how you use your time. You get to choose your friends. So teach people how to treat you. Now, not because of person's position and authority. You think that they have a right to treat you just about any way they feel like. You have to decide what you will and will not accept. Allow people to look at you and you then look at them. Not up, not down at them. Up or down, no. Look at. You have a right to be here. Desideratha captures this quite aptly. You are a child of the universe, no less than the trees and the stars. You have a right to be here. And whether or not it is clear to you, no doubt the universe is unfolding as it should. You're special. 
you're great, you're beautiful. Get in everyone's cheering gallery with a pure mind and the happiness and peace of mind you will enjoy will blow your own mind and you will exude joy and peace people effortlessly. I caution you though, do not make people a priority if they consider you an option. Take it from me. Do not make people a priority if they consider you an option. The third arch is self-love. We are worthy of self-love and we are worthy to be loved. So embrace a positive self-image. I am beautiful. And I say that I am the best thing since sliced bread. Believe it. Live it. Stop criticizing yourself. Try approving and affirming and see the difference. Get over the failures and the negatives. Mark Twain says, a man cannot be comfortable without his own approval. If you are not good at loving yourself, you will never be able to pour love into others. Don't overthink or you will judge. And you will see problems where problems don't even exist. Walk in the uniqueness of whom God has called you to be. Don't give in to the perception of others and get over this manipulated desire to please others. Enjoy life, fourth arch. Enjoy life. Because savoring life's joys and comfort will bring you happiness. Here we have the image of a couple enjoying life's special moments. Relaxing, make time for you. Because nobody else is obligated to do so. The beauty of life is in precious moments. Stop and smell the roses. It is not cliche. We actually must stop and smell the roses. When it rains, I beg of you, see rainbows. And when it gets dark, see stars. Pause always to express gratitude. Never let what you want allow you to forget what you have. Nurture relationships. I love to say this over and over. When you sleep, sleep in the finest bed. Use up the crystal, silverware, and china for your regular dining. Don't leave the expensive pot set for when you have visitors at Christmas. Just enjoy quality life daily. Eat at any exclusive restaurant because that is your preferred cuisine. Not that you're keeping up with the Joneses. And I just love Encel because Encel provides the opportunity for ongoing professional development. And this is essential for self-worth. You must know that you have the satisfaction of giving up your best in your professional sphere. So benefit from all the opportunities, the training opportunities, and be a lifelong learner. Now the whole matter of balancing job responsibilities and the novel scenario of having to homeschool your children. I remember that this situation can prove to be overwhelming. And it certainly can trigger burnout. So plan your day carefully so that you can manage your time, manage your task without becoming flustered. Finally, your dash must matter. Life is made up of two dates and a dash. So the dash has to matter. That red dash represents your lifetime. So create legacy by how you have impacted persons. Not the work you have done 
or the trophies and possessions. Live a rewarding and satisfying life of joy, contentment, happiness, and peace. Death is life's nearest neighbor, so it is not morbid to speak of this. So lead a fulfilling life. It is good and healthy to think about death from time to time because it puts things into perspective and reminds us what really matters. The perspective that death is inevitable reminds us to get busy living. Matthew Kelly records the top five things dying people wish they had done differently. One, that they had cared less about what other people thought. People's opinion don't define you. That two, that they had realized that happiness is indeed a choice. So choose to be happy. Three, that they had lived more in the moment and had touched more lives. Live in the moment. Touch as many lives as you can. Four, had spent more time doing what they enjoyed. So do what you love to do. Do what you enjoy. They had taken better care of themselves. Please take care of yourself. Please take care of the self. Please take care of you without harboring any trace of guilt. I invite you to watch this video clip. What's the best way to use this? And they would tell me because they... Hi, I'm Dr. Bertice Berry. When I was a girl growing up, I did cleaning work. I did all kinds of cleaning work. But I cleaned houses in the morning and on weekends. And in the evenings, I cleaned banks. And I would catch the bus to and from work. And I started this job probably when I was about 12 and continued all the way through high school. And then sometimes in graduate school even. But I would meet these other women who were on the corner. I say other women. I was a girl. They were women. And they would be on the corner with me catching the bus to and from. And I would ask them all kinds of questions about how to clean, what to clean, what's the best way to use this. And they would tell me because they knew then what the world is finding out now, that cleaning work is essential work. And without good cleaning and sanitation, everybody gets sick. One woman would be off to the side, kind of quiet, and she was always kind of sizing me up. And then one day she pulled me aside and she said, little girl, always clean the light. I said, ma'am? She said, always take care of the lights. Ma'am? She said, every house you go in, in that first hallway, there's always a big chandelier. Nobody's cleaned it. Get yourself a ladder, climb up there, climb up to that light and take your solution with you. Put it in a little bowl and clean each crystal and clean the base and make sure you clean the bulb. Make sure you clean the light itself because nobody cleans the light. And if you take care of the light, everything shines. Well, I did what she said. The very first time I did it, the woman of the house came out and said, what did you do? It looks amazing in here. And the husband came in and he said, who is this girl and whoever she is, get her back and make sure you pay her extra. Always take care of the light. 
that has stayed with me. In my life, I don't do cleaning work anymore for a job, for a living, but I always take care of the light. There's a light inside of each of us that must be nurtured, that must be cared for, that needs to shine brightly. It hasn't been addressed. It hasn't been talked to. It hasn't been loved. Give it the music it wants. Give it the dance it needs. Give it the sunshine it so admires. Give it the stars at night. Your light, that thing about you that shines so brightly that others want to see, needs to be nurtured and loved and cared for. It's been forgotten. We're given this time to really take care of the light. Shine. And when you do, you give others permission to do the same. Don't hide your light somewhere under a bushel or in a corner. Shine your light and take care of it. Nurture it. Love it. The world needs you to shine. Hello, are you hearing me? Hello. Are you hearing me, colleagues? I'm not sure if you're hearing. Okay, so uh, Mrs. Reed, this was indeed an excellent presentation uh, colleagues i am here and i am so inspired there are certain things that i will be doing differently just listening um, to mrs reed recognizing that we are so much in control of so many things that we have let pass us and we really have taken on so much stress that we really do not need to and so i just want to take this opportunity I'm not sure if I'm being heard, but I just want to take this opportunity to thank our principal extraordinaire, Mrs. Pauline Reed, for this excellent presentation. And not only for this, but for always responding to the National College for Educational Leadership whenever we call on her. Um, you would have seen her featured on the Principal's Voice magazine as that individual who would have built a school from ground up. So for those of you who have not gotten a chance to read that story, the e-zine is available. Mrs. Reed has been doing an excellent job in education. She has been molding, mentoring, coaching, building, nurturing so many of us. I too am her child. So for those of you who do not know, that's my mother right there okay who has been praying for nurturing molding speaking to god every day on my behalf and the national college for educational leadership and so many principals would have benefited from her wisdom colleagues and i i my life has changed mrs reed i had some powerpoint to do after this and i'm just going to go self-care give free I'm just going to go enjoy myself. I am never going to question the cost of the sheet anymore. I am going to buy the expensive sheet with the tread cone. I'm never going to look at my pay advice and wonder why I'm paying so much for a vehicle anymore. I am going to enjoy all of the beauty that is around me. I'm going to go outside and look at the flowers I've planted so long that they're just there. I can't tell when last I look at them. I'm going to watch the sunset this afternoon. 
colleagues, this is life and we have to come to just live it. This is really where amazing. The people are crying out for our part two. They're asking for a repeat because we came onto Facebook Live very, very late. And so we have to discuss how that's gonna happen. I'm gonna look at the recording to see if it captures as much. And we're gonna see how best we can respond to the needs of our principals. Just excellent colleagues, just excellent. My life has changed. It doesn't matter what people want to think about me anymore or my fancy clothes and shoes. <laughs> this is really, I am grateful. So I'll open now for some questions and um, then we will wrap up and close. Thanks so much. Anybody wants to pop in and say something? A, a commendation, a question? Yes. Thank you. And you know what, too? When, when I just started, it was great. Right. We're listening to. We're not having enough. You know, you know what she did? She well, joined her class. Oh, my We're going to take, could you unmute Fairfield Primary? Fairfield Primary was, was speaking. So could we unmute Fairfield? For a very, very long time. So teachers, we can only help each other as we go along. And I'm going to, if God forbid, and I'm still in this position, every God Almighty Thursday when it's planning time, we're going to be doing something in technology. Because probably do take it out. <laughs> All right, um, Mrs. Reed, there's a question. Unmute me, Tony. There's a there's a question for Mrs. Reed. If you fail this the stress test, Mrs. Reed. Someone is asking, how can you be helped if you failed the stress test? It is really my hope that after this session, you will now try to embrace all the counsel and the advice that I gave so that you can now look, reflect, think about what it is that is causing you this great stress and address it immediately. Nobody else can do it for you. You have to address it. Beautiful, lovely. I see someone saying that they're gonna buy their journal and their candles today. They're gonna start that activity <laughs> right now. Um, someone wants to know how they can contact Mrs. Reed. Um, just contact me and I will allow you contact. All right. Um, somebody said that Mrs. Reed is a godsend, an exceptional presenter. Um, the webinar is absolutely amazing. Somebody said that they cried, they literally cried. Um, Mrs. Reed, can you send us the stress test? Um, can, can I you will. Okay, so we will, will blast yes. it through to, to all of you because we have you in WhatsApp groups or emails, so we'll blast it through. Somebody will be ordering their silk pajamas as well. <laughs> That's lovely. So, and the romance, we can't forget the romance. That part, oh, I'm no, like, yes, can't. the romance is so important. Yes, so <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are going to be doing everything that you have said, Mrs. Reed. We are just so grateful. So, um, Thank you again, Mrs. Reed, for the analogy of London bridges falling down and just the way you connected each piece to this presentation, just brilliant. And so colleagues, we are gonna be signing out. Um, we are, oh. We're promising you to, yes, thanks, thanks, to upload thanks, thanks. the recording. 
Doug, there are a few people. persons who may want to ask something. I'm seeing some persons who have raised their hand. All right, so just, just give I'm them access. On, to right, so the first person that can go ahead is Katie Initial Hilton Fraser. All right. Okay, are you hearing me? Yes, quite clearly. Okay, all right. Um, first of all, congratulations, Dr. Ingleton. This was awesome. Well done. Mrs. Reed, I'm in awe of you. I continue to be. It was a, a stellar presentation. You really hit the nail on the head with all of those self-care tips. I really liked your analogy with the London Bridge and just being able to apply some of those very simple things to our lives that we often take for granted. I would like to plug this book called The Happiness Advantage. I did it um, in a course last semester and it was really so instrumental in terms of understanding ourselves as leaders how important that is to ensuring that we maintain that kind of balance that we need in our lives and that act of gratitude may seem so minor but it is so critical in changing our perspective and yeah. really having a more positive attitude towards life so thank you very much mrs reed really well done very apt and kudos to the ncl team again thank you kadia that's kadia or our past director of programs now in foreign. All right. Lovely. Thank <laughs> you so very much. All right. Um, anybody else? Anybody else, Miss Rankin, wants to jump in? Linton Ware can now go ahead. Linton Ware, Mr. Ware, Principal Ware. Thank you very much. Um, let me extend good afternoon to my colleagues, and um, I really want to do a very big shout out to Mrs. Reed. Um, I must share that Mrs. Reed is a very unselfish individual. I remember when she was president of the Association of Principals and Vice Principal, I would have served her as first vice president. And I remember when she decided to leave office, she said, Mr. Weir, I want to pass the baton to you. But I was of the opinion that I was not ready for this. And she said to me, I will continue in the association. And, and I, I must report, that uh, my journey in the association for those two years, Mrs. Reed, would have really built a real scaffolding around me. And I want to say thanks to her. And um, that is why I would have made mention that she's very unselfish. And I mean, when, I, when I've served as president of the Association of Principals and Vice Principals, she really would have pulled the different stops to ensure that the association soared under my leadership. But little did um, some individuals know that Mrs. Reed was the person behind me. Um, ensuring that I, I, I put forward the different things. So Mrs. Reed, I want to thank you again. I want to thank you for being unselfish and I want to thank you for being calculating. And I want to also thank you as it relates to succession planning. You have done a wonderful job. And this, this morning, this afternoon, um, you have done extremely well. I think you should now be employed to ENSEL to continue uh, providing this sort of insight and vision as it relates to leadership. Job well done. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Weir. I've been so inspired by you as well. Thank you. Yes. Mrs. Reed is very much employed to Encel. <laughs> you know, she is very much employed. She is with us, with us every step of the way in everything that we do. She is our chief advisor. You know, um, just, just amazing um, all the work that she has done. Thank you again, um, Principal Reed for all that you have been doing with us and through us. Um, your, 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 your mentees have grown, you know, I'm your principal, I'm seeing so many others who would have been under your wing and we're grateful. Anybody else? Um, yes, Juliet Cook. Cook, all right, so let's hear from her. Um. Yes, Juliet. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes. Just wanted to um, hear the name of the book that Kadian, the name of the book that Kadian mentioned. What was that? Okay. And Kadian, if you could just write it in the chat so everybody can benefit as well. I hope she did not leave. Um, if anybody remembers, you can just drop it in the chat. All right, for Principal Cook. Um, do we have anybody else that would like to say something before we close off? Yes, Doc, we have about um, 
Is that seven more persons or six? All right, let, all right, let them. Uh, let them. Right, so Kimberlyn, uh, can now go ahead, Kimberlyn Morris. Morris? All right, let's move on to Chelsea Simpson. Chelsea? Hello, All good right. afternoon. Yes. Chelsea Simpson here. Yes. Chelsea Simpson here. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon to you all. It was an excellent um, presentation. I, I sat in my chair. I couldn't move. You know, I'm really touched. I've been helped. I, I made a few notes. The first one is that I must self-care. Sometimes I, I, we, we all fall short, you know. And so I'm going to start pulling us on the sheets and, and the cutout that, that I put away. Mrs. Reed, you have touched me. I would want to watch this again. I want to have it somewhere. You know, this, this cannot just go like this. We want it somewhere we can listen again and other persons who didn't get a chance to go on. Excellent. And I'm glad that I'm a part of this. Thank you. Awesome. Beautiful. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Any, anybody else? Tony? Any? The name of the book was posted in the chat so you can go in and see that. I think it's a happiness advantage. The happiness advantage. Anybody else want to jump in? Or is it that we want to all go self-caring now? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah, I suppose that's Hello. 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 This is Cecil Donald from Enid Bennett High School. <laughs> No, 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 Hello? Yes, we're hearing Dr. you. Dr. Ingleton? Hello. Yes, hello. This is Denisha Fraser um, from Holland High School. Just want to my commendations um, concerning this session. Am I being heard? I hope. Um, I just yes, want to say to Mrs. Good. Reed, I just want to say to Mrs. Reed that an excellent job. We enjoyed the presentation. I want to take this opportunity to just say thanks to her on behalf of myself and the other um, mentees. And she's really touched a number of our lives. And um, I just want to say congrats to Encel on a job well done for this session. And to Mrs. Reed again, continue to shine. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good, morning. Good, morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Somebody else is speaking. Can I go ahead, Dr. Ingleton? I guess she left. Okay. I guess she right. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's a break. It's a break. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Dr. Ingleton. We're hearing, go ahead. Yes, good afternoon. My name is Rochelle Henry. Are you hearing? Yes, we're hearing you, Rochelle. Yes, the name is the name is Rochelle Henry. And I'm truly honored and privileged to be serving in a little school in St. Anne, Keith Primary. I am extremely pleased and honored to be in the company of educators and to be in the company of Mrs. Pauline Reed. I thank Encel for this wonderful initiative. 
and we look forward to the others that you will have. Mrs. Reed, you know, and you know that you know that you know <laughs> that you have touched my life in an quintessentially awesome way. I am honored to have served with you, to have learned from you while at Holland High. And I must say that most, if not all, that I do at, at school, I learned from you and I continue to learn. Uh, your image of the bridge, absolutely amazing. And certainly I'm already serving and living it up because we dress how we want to be addressed and I learned that from you. But colleagues, we certainly cannot leave this presentation here and we certainly must have it embedded within us that we will set a time we will write it down, we will type up a schedule that will guide how we will take care of ourselves. Mrs. Reed, the Lord bless you and certainly his plans continue to, be, to prosper you and not to harm you. Thank you so much, the quintessentially awesome, extraordinary principal, Mrs. Pauline Reed. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rachel. Uh, hello, good evening. She is so graceful, isn't she? She is graceful, I tell you, oh my gosh. Yes, Any anybody else, Alicia, Principal Ellis. Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Ingleton. Good morning, everybody. Can I say that Mrs. Reed is real and we needed to hear it articulated like that because very often we think that these things are things we should hide in the closet and it's like a breath of fresh air. And I tell you, I am sure with going back to school, we are going to be using these tools. And yes, many of us are going to go and buy the new mattress. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to make sure that we're resting a little better. But thank you so much for touching all of us and for touching me in particular. I won't even bother to get into that. Um, Mrs. Reed, thank you, Ensel, and keep up the good work. Thanks, Mrs. Ellis. I request, K, Mrs. Reed, that I would love to honor um, for you to just pray for the principal cohort grouping um, before we leave this session. Just pray for us for this return of school and just cover us as we make our way through the pandemic and the ripple effects thereof. Thank you. Good afternoon. This is Reed. Yes, Principal Doyle, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the things that I often look at for our lead, many of our leaders who have gone out as say, great principals, I, I, as soon as they have left, realize that the school is going down, which shows that there was not great succession planning. And I often think that in, if you are a great leader, it should all be- All right, all microphones should be muted. Kaylee, your microphone isn't muted. We still yes, should after you have left. do this after almost a month, remind persons to turn off their microphone. So please be mindful. We appreciate the effort. Yes, after you have left, your school should not be going down as if you were the sole person. And because you have left, you um, everything is going crashing. And it is shown in the school at um, Holland High, because even though Mrs. Reed is not there physically, it still shows that she is there, which means that she has really done a great job in making sure that after I have left this place, this place is not me, it is supposed to be a teamwork, and she has actually done a great job in that. And the presentation right. was so, excellent. Um, Andre, um, Deandra, you must Very keep much. your microphone muted. If I have to tell anybody again, I'm just going to take you out of the room. We have been doing this for a month, and we must know by now the principles on which these classes are held. Yes, I have learned a lot from it, especially as someone Kelly, says... are you signing two times? The one about taking care of yourself. 
because of right, so we are I guilty am going of that. To send us the heading for our I think I think Tamara Shaw is right. having a different conversation. So it's no, it mightily yeah. sorry, mightily sorry. Didn't <laughs> recognize yeah. yes. it was unmuted. I'm actually online class and I couldn't miss this. I must add my two pen oh, and sent oh. as well. It was a beautiful, 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 inspirational session. And I really hope that we will have much, much more of this. It's not that these things we, we don't know, but over time we get so caught up in routine and we just take things for granted and we we really slack off on ourselves and we really, really as um, professionals, as teachers, with, with the magnitude of work that we put on um, daily should really have a me time, a moment to really um, refresh self because really and truly whatever we're putting out, if we're not at our best, then pretty much it is, it is coming across to whoever we are, we, are, we are presenting to. And so we really ought to make that effort. So I'm extremely sorry for coming in like that, but I really enjoyed the session. All right. Thanks, Tamara. Yes, so just to end I'm what I was saying. saying. Just to end what I was saying, Mrs. Sweet, this is, I, I know you know me. This is Doily. I'm now at some sharp teachers. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and we have, met, we have met in different fairs because we studied together as well. And I yes. must say that I am, I am so pleased. I am very happy. Well motivated. Can't wait to go back out. And I, you are a people person and continue the good work you have been doing. Excellent presentation. Beautiful. All right, so, okay, so, so I'm just going to ask you to, yes, Tony, yes. Um, Darren Johnson wants to share something. Speak. All right, so let's hear from Darren and then we'll go to the prior. Yes, Darren. Yes, Dr. Ingleton, thank you so much um, for uh, the Encel team for facilitating this session. I must tell you, I am all the way in New York and um, I had some other engagement that I had to put that aside and jump online to hear Miss, Mrs. Reed. Uh, Mrs. Reed, it was an excellent presentation. Um, Thank you. you know, Self-love, self-care, and I'll definitely, I'll definitely be getting um, that silk pajama. And um, <laughs> also, <laughs> also um, I will definitely have to connect with you um, on the side as well to see how you can um, bring this um, level of positivity to um, my staff here in New York. So, um, Encel, kudos to you. I, I am just so um, proud of the work you guys are doing in this space in Jamaica to support leaders, to support schools, and it's tremendous, and you guys should all be proud of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you Thanks so much. So much. And just, just to, to let you know that when we were struggling with the streaming, Darren um, put his phone on his um, computer screen and went live just so that other individuals could hear. So, you know, we are so wow. grateful for that. That is just amazing. You know, we were struggling, but he just jumped in and held us up. Yes, he is. Just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So at this time, Mrs. Yes. Reed, I'm going to ask you to pray for us. Pray for the, the system, the education system. Pray for the teachers, the, the principals who are going out there, the, the parents, the students, just all of us, the end self, uh, Mrs. Reed, as we close this session out. Thank you so much. Our Father and our God, Indeed, it is a time of refreshing each time we bow in your presence. Father, how grateful we are for your many and your varied blessings. Father, even as we face the challenging times, we are confident that you knew that this moment would have come and that you have made provision for all of us. Our God, we come to you today presenting to you persons who operate along the educational landscape. Persons, Lord, who have been so placed that they have to chart the course for so many. We ask, Lord, that you will lead them aright. 
We ask, Lord, that you will empower. We ask, Lord, that you will equip. And we ask, Lord, that you will grant them hearts of kindness, hearts of sensitivity, hearts that will prompt them to be responsive, Lord, to the needs of those around us. God, remember the children, the students, the trainees. Lord, we ask that they will come to recognize that only a life that is wrapped up in you will last. Help them to recognize and acknowledge you, Lord, as their source and their sufficiency. Lord, we know that they exist in a world that has been infiltrated by so many ills. Lord, where we as adults have not really left them a legacy that is so worthwhile. And so, Lord, for that, we ask your forgiveness. Father, we pray and we commit to you all our activities, Lord, as we make preparation for the post-COVID period. Lord, send vision, send foresight, and help us, Lord, to operate, God, under your directive. Father, we pray for Encel in a special way. Persons you have called, persons you have empowered for greater service, Lord, help them to see what it is that they're doing. That it is not really just a career, Lord, but it is a vocation, a call to Christian service. So, Lord, help them not to become taken up with accolades. But, Lord, that they will seek to serve your people, which is the ultimate way of serving you. Lord, help us all to be good stewards. Lord, that we will walk faithfully with you so that, Lord, all our activities, Lord, will have your divine approval. Lord, we ask that even now, as educators have gathered, Lord, to gain knowledge as to how we ought to operate, Lord, in terms of taking care of the self. Keep us reminded, Lord, as you said to your disciples, the poor we will have with us forever. But Lord, there comes a time when we have to give attention to ourselves and our well-being. So Lord, we ask that you rid them of every, feel, every feeling of guilt and help them to walk in the freedom that has been established. Come against every plan of the enemy. And we ask Heavenly Father that you will bless us and bless us abundantly. And we give you thanks for hearing. Amen. Amen. Excellent. Thank you. We still have 309 on. We had, we maxed out at 500 and then we were streaming. So we captured some other individuals and even though it has ended, we still have over 300 people on. That is showing just the impact that you have had, uh, Mrs. Reed, and just the, how grateful individuals are for this beautiful presentation. And so, colleagues, I commit again to uploading the recording onto our YouTube channel. And um, we're going to be providing you with more support. Um, for those of you who have not yet registered for the virtual instructional leadership course, that is amazing. We finished the pilot and we're launching on June 1. So we'll be connecting to this forum as well. And so colleagues, yet again, I thank you. Please go and do some self-care right now. Please go <laughs> and pamper, all right? I'm going to be doing that. Thanks so much and have a great day. Thank you. All right. Thank you too. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Doc. Thank All right. Well done. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Ingleton. Thank you. Thanks, Mrs. Reed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, thanks. I think I'm going to go and clean that um, chandelier now. Yes! <laughs> Fantastic analogy. I love it. Yes, I'm going to clean that chandelier now. I need some more light. <laughs> That's the first thing my husband will hear when he comes in the door, comes to the door. Clean the lights. <laughs> Take care of the light. <laughs> Continue to be thank safe, you. everyone. Yes, thank you. You too, you too, you too. <laughs> yes. Um, continue to keep safe, everyone. That's that's a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.